Next, we're going to create the swing arm. And I can see that the holes in the swing arm match the 10 millimeter holes that are in the base and the gripper. Also, it has a center hole. Overall thickness of 9 around each of the bosses that go with the holes. And the center part has a uh, thickness of 5. So if I wanted to uh, extrude this part from a mid-plane, I would have to have a plane 4.5 millimeters above the established surface. To start the sketch of the swing arm, I need a new sketch plane. I'm going to create a sketch plane. This is going to be offset from the top surface of the gripper. So the distance of offset, I can see it's going above it. I want this to be 4.5 millimeters above that surface so that when I extrude my sketch using symmetric, it will be above and below that plane. So I'll accept this and you can see that it's created that plane uh, in my feature list. So we'll start a new sketch. We'll put it on this plane. I'm going to view normal to the sketch plane. And in this case, there's some geometry that I want to use that's already existing. So I'm going to project it onto this sketch plane. So both of those holes will be uh, geometry that I want to use. So with this done, I'm going to create a construction line or a center line from the center of this hole to the center of this hole. I'm going to use the slot tool that's under my offset and when I click on this center line uh, the default is a 20 millimeter diameter uh, circle that would make up uh, this shape and I'm going to accept that by hitting enter on the keyboard. I need a few circles here. Uh, I'm going to go to the midpoint of my center line and snap this circle to the outside edge and then add another one in the center. Um, I'm going to say that this is going to be equal to this other circle so that they're all 10. Uh, also I need for the boss I'm going to need a circle here. I'll snap that to the make that tangent. And with that, I've created all of the geometry that I need for the sketch. So I'm going to choose to extrude. And in this case, I want to extrude all of these areas. This is going to be the center part of the swing arm. This has a depth of five millimeters and I want this to be symmetric so it's both above and below the uh, sketch plane. We'll go ahead and this is going to be creating a new part. We'll notice that it's created part number three down here. Now we have bosses above and below each of those holes so I'm going to create um, another extrusion in this case, I'll turn the sketch back on visibility-wise, but I still can't see that's in the middle of the plane. So over here on part three, I'm going to turn the visibility of that off so I can see the sketch again. Now in this case, I'm just working with this boss that's at these three places. And these are not going to be new. I'm going to actually add these, and the merge scope is going to be part three. These are B symmetric, so it goes above and below, and it has an overall um, extrusion. This is 9. With that done, I'll accept it, and I'm going to turn the visibility of that part back on. So I can see that this swing arm actually just rests on top of uh, my base and my gripper. Now part of the power of creating these parts in context with each other is that if I were to go back, for example, now and edit sketch 1, this distance of 100 between the gripper and the base, if I were to change this to, for example, 140 millimeters, 
you can see that the swing arm automatically has been updated uh, for that because it's based, the uh, sketch for the swing arm is based on the underlying geometry of the other parts. So they automatically update. I'm going to undo that.